We're back with the question and answer session with Fastcart and Griffin Gaming RPG from Soul Citizens and Major Star Stuff from Major Star Stuff and T Games and Star Stuff. Uh, if you missed our little uh, the video we released earlier on uh, September, uh, the controversy of September and the sales of September and how they kind of don't quite match up with one another. The link for that will be above Fastcart's head. You click that link, you can go watch that, and then you can watch this because we're going to probably take some questions from the chat, which will re reference stuff we've already talked to, or we'll say, oh, we've already talked about that, and then move on beyond that. So just keep that in mind as we're talking. Well, with that being said, let's get started with the first question. The first question is from Steve the Dancer, who asks, what do you think of 3.24.2 with 42 new MFD keyboard keybinds al alone, 84 with long and short activation? How will you deal with it? It's a good question. Anybody want to jump on it? Well, no? that's why it's good to have voice attack, joystick. <laughs> oh, oh, I will say it. Um, not to people with voice attack, but ACS voice pack did a, a special release or special announcement saying, "Hey, we've updated our uh, keybind thing." So they have yeah. a keybind tool for, for uh, mm -hmm. ACS voice pack. So yeah, that was something that happened came out last week. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's something. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I think this is a good thing because you could still act uh, access all those things just via the MFDs. So it's not like yes. you have to set yeah. up those hotkeys. It's just they're giving you the ability to set up those hotkeys. So those people who are the Shvetty of the Shvet Lords, you know, who are just really like, look, mm. really trying to do it, they can have those little mm -hmm. buttons they can push. But for the rest of us, we could just go down, look, tap, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm already overwhelmed. I, I'm, I'm back to keyboard and mouse. Mm. I used to be left hand stick, right hand mouse. Mm -hmm. But um, even with like my, my I, I tried to export my joystick settings and then it, I just gave up. I mostly fly <laughs> medium to large size ships into asteroids and take screenshots. So I, um, I'll, I'll just go with the default key, key binds and, and figure them out as, as I need them. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I, I should probably just sit in a turret and shoot at things. <laughs> Uh, next question comes from Gin and Tonic, who asks, what do you think of the plans are for the Atlas uh, left, Atlas's left arm? Griffin, you mentioned that earlier. So what, 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 do, you, what do you think they're going to put, put into yeah, the left arm? Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, maybe, and Paul, you're a lore person, so I don't know the whole thing about Argo, but that that is looks like a small version of the same unit that's on the front of uh, the, um, the, the Argo. Um, MPUV? The MPUV, but there's another one. The, uh, you mean the couple, raft? The two, the raft, the two large yeah, things? Oh, things. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's why I keep wondering what, what <laughs> is that? And so I'm hoping, and again, this is just a hope. Which they said about the raft, they specifically stated they serve no purpose other than being aesthetically just pleasing. Just aesthetically yeah. pleasing, yeah. and that was yeah. it, right. So I, yeah. I hope, but I looked at the design on the one on the hand thing, and it's got wires running to it and a whole bunch of stuff over there. So I'm hoping that it, it does become something that's else utility. So, yeah. you know, what that is, like we were talking about repair. They gave us this new thing about repair, going out and taking a, 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 a multi-tool and repairing a pipe or something. Maybe on a large industrial scale, you would use a unit like that. Low torching, I don't know. But I, I just think that it will be a multi-tool of some form on that left arm yeah. because it, otherwise they would have given us two tractor beams. And, and we see this kind of mirrored in the um, in the vulture, you know, where you have the tractor beam on one side, but you can put uh, two salvage beams on it if you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm just hoping that they're, they, they want to say they want to give us options, you know, and hopefully we're not locked into something. And I think that would add greater value to a unit like that. I, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I'm, I, they, I'm, something's going to have to happen because it's symmetry. CIG is all about like balance and stuff like that when mm -hmm. it comes to designing these things. Not always. Well, it, unless it's explicitly, you know, not balanced. Like the Corsairs was explicitly designed to be a little bit different, but it's Argo. Like that doesn't really work with the Argos. And the, um, and the MSR. Stuff. Yeah. But the MSR is also like, like Crusader. And I don't think there's many non, non, like, like, Drake has a long history of ships. Yeah, I'm going to say Drake too, yeah. But but Crusader really doesn't. It's like, like the only ship. Oh, no, I guess it's the Ares too, which kind of has sort of a sy sy symmetrical a little bit. So it's got there. But like Argo is so what's the other? What, what's the other? Um, what's the other um, data runner? Uh, the Herald. 
the Herald was was, Herald, was originally yeah. was originally asymmetrical, and then they kind of made it more symmetrical. So, right. Uh, I I, I want to say they'll do something with the left arm. I I optimistically, the ATLS is a Swiss Army knife where you can swap mm -hmm. the 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 yeah. the, uh, the tractor beam out for a repair beam or a salvage beam or something like that. Mm. But I think I think. The pessimist in me is that is a big flat object that you can use to beat people with if they get too close to you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a punching arm. It is a power fist. Uh, but uh, they just didn't have the functionality to add it, it add that into it originally. So then they'll just, mm -hmm. they'll just make it in, available yeah. in the future. Get away from her, you bitch, you know, kind of like moment. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah. I mean, for, for all we know, the, the Atlas in the, in its current state could be T tier 0 0.5 Atlas, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and just, you know, yeah. and a very early iteration of plans they may or may not already have, or at least come up with, um, mm -hmm. yeah. over the course of the development. We don't, we don't know exactly what they're doing, but I think there, there's, there's something that they're either planning on, or there's, there's some ideas that have been left on the cutting room floor for it. Um, but it's clear, like, it doesn't even have damage states yet or anything like that. It's not mm. fully it's in, ready. It's in, 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 indestructible, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Paul, you, 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 you maybe, you, you remind me of that uh, maybe for April Fool's Dog, uh, they, they could say that we, we're adding, we're adding, like, sockets or something like that, and, and they, they, they can make it, like, Rock'em Sock'em rock sock robot. robots. That's the old reference. Yeah. <laughs> That's the old reference. Some people may not get it, but, yeah. <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em. I know my, I know my audience they all got it um <laughs> they all they, they, and they they actually owned the rock'em sock'em robots when they turned 30 um mm. <laughs> okay I, I want a gunship and an exploration version of the atlas now yes mm -hmm. gunship version <laughs> <laughs> gravity, uh, gravity bombs in the left arm oh god <laughs> um but oh uh, i was gonna say something about about uh, the atls but um, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I, I do think that it was, I do think that it's, it was originally made for squadron. I think it's the reason why we have it. It was originally made mm -hmm. for squadron, but it's made because you're walking around a station or you're walking around certain things. You'll see some of these things moving boxes around and such. And so it's, it's designed as a set piece rather than as a tool. And maybe you get to use it every so often or something like that as an option, but it's not designed to be like, in the line of combat. So they never made a damage states for it because it wasn't supposed to be damaged. And so they, they, uh, they just kind of did that with squadron. And then they said, Hey, we're doing the cargo thing for star citizen. Let's just put this in so we can do it for star citizens. So, mm. you know, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Major star stuff. Do you think any, they're going to add anything to the left arm? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you guys are giving me ideas now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Again, I, I the the more the more I think about it, uh, thinking about it right now as we speak, I feel like um, who knows? We we'll, we may look back in a year from now and be like, oh, that was a very early iteration of implementing this this Titan suit kind of you know mm -hmm. concept, and uh, who knows? We may have we may end up having uh, ten fifteen different. Um, Titan suit style vehicles, and it all started with the the Atlas that we have right now. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I think someone in chat said an um, a scanner of sorts would be nice. You know, something. Um, but then again, that also exploration went right. So what mm -hmm. what purpose would a scanner serve currently? Cool. Um, I cool guess factor. the logical next evolution <laughs> will be giving it giving it a gun, right? Mm -hmm. For for PvP combat. Mm. Um, or for 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 ground based combat, sorry. Fast code. What do you think? I already gave my answer. Oh, okay. talk, I'm uh, give, give it some kind Continue. of. Uh, I mean, like a, a salvage, repair, and 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 attachment makes sense. I, I don't know what she is going to do I, for, for that one. I got that. I'm I'm just waiting for my Titan suit. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, we got some questions on YouTube. Uh, somebody asked uh, ten dollars. Thank you for that super chat there, Escapa, who asks, uh, "How often do you interact with Spectrum forums?" I do want to to clarify: none of us are CIG developers. <laughs> none of us work for CIG. <laughs> so, if you're asking that, if we're like CIG, we're not CIG devs, so we're not answering. We can't answer it in CIG devs. I will say myself: um, I don't go to Spectrum very often, though. Myself, uh, mostly because whenever I do. 
like I would say about 50% of the time someone tries to use it to take the piss out of me because there's a lot of people who don't like me on spectrum. So I just like, I'm not going to show up to a forum to have a discussion, to have people like decide that they're going to use it as a, as a platform to uh, uh, like attack me. It's like, why, why bother even cut talk about that? Um, sure. But yeah, in general, like, I don't go there too often. I do visit every so often, especially when someone says, hey, they announced this on Spectrum or well, reading the devs' responses and such like that. But, you know. Uh, Fastcart, how often do you go to Spectrum? Uh, pack note, uh, probably twice a week. I look at Dev Tracker more than interact with, with, um, with, 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 with Spectrum. I don't actually post there. But, uh, yes, every Thursday for Soul Talk, we cover some Dev Tracker um, comments. So, yeah. Okay. Griffin? Yeah, same thing. Anything that CIG pushes out, if it comes out through the uh, tracker, I'll go there for that. On occasion, I will post something if it's something that really is on my mind, but usually it's more of a game suggestion or something like that. And unfortunately, I have to read it because my Saturday show is basically the voice of the community. So I have mm -hmm. to go in and read it and see what people are saying. And yeah, I would not want that job, <laughs> good or bad, you know, good or bad, you know, I mean, a lot of times there's good stuff out there. Don't get me wrong, but, but as far as being out there frequently per, for personal reasons, I'm beyond just me checking what CIG has to say. That's pretty much it. Uh, Mr. Stressif, how often do you go to a spectrum? Uh, infrequently, I want to say these these past few few weeks or past two weeks, um, I've been looking at the the testing chat channel during the the tech preview that we had for mm -hmm. the server meshing, right? So that's something. If there's something um, that that um, makes sense, that I go there. Other than that, um, maybe I browse the forums to look for some weird form of I don't know. For example, I. CCU'd my by Banu Merchantman to an, to an A2 the other week because I was tired of waiting no! for a ship and I never lived to see yes <laughs> to an A2 out of all ships right he so now I, I am. now I spend my days <laughs> now I spend my days browsing browsing uh, the forums uh, to find if there's another individual who made the same uh, horrible choice and, 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 and I can be friends with them um, occasionally the community hub like last year when I when, when I um, uh, release those those two Banu language videos. Go watch my Banu language videos. Um, those I posted on the community hub, and I think I got the 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 what's it called most valuable MVP post post, or something. Yeah. Uh, MVP. Tag. That that, was, that yeah. made me very happy. <laughs> so yeah, oh thank you. So that kind of you know that uh, got me in touch with one of the the community team, and we talked a little bit. But that's basically the very infrequent um, interaction I have with with that. Uh, um. All right, I'm gonna go he through. He hurt me. He hurt me when he said he upgraded the Bunny Man. Man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I, 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 I'm just, I, I don't, I don't think I'll. Uh, sorry, German, German uh, sense of humor and sarcasm here, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I'll live to see the release of that ship, and I just want something <laughs> in the here and now that I can just fly. And um, it's, it's a, it's a discussion for another uh, time and space I, probably. But I think I, the A2. Is more than just the meme that people make it to be out. It's, it's more than just a, 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 a meme for Jump Town. Yeah. But um, another time. <laughs> I, I'm not going to make the, germ the joke about the German buying of the bomber. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> let's, not, let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Uh, all right. Uh, we have a couple more questions on, on uh, YouTube, which we can ask real quick, which is... Uh, Steven uh, Hebert asks, with engineering gameplay coming in, do you think we will see many big ship fights or is this going to be more small, small slash uh, medium ship fleets? Uh, I think we'll get both. I mean, I'm not expecting like full on EVE Online battles, at least not in the short term, but long term. Uh, yeah, we could, we could have some of the battles take place depending on, uh, you know, what, what goes on in, in, in a verse. Uh, star stuff. Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, question is, is like, do you think we're going to see? Do you think we're going to see more larger ship battles, or are we going to see more small to medium ship battles now that they're adding engineering in? Um, I'm super excited for engineering, um, but as someone who also appreciates larger ships, uh, not so much the the, the fighters, um, I am. One of those people who are worried about will I still be able to solo my my massive ships, right? Mm -hmm. um, I stand by the opinion that 
um, as long as you stay out of combat and you flip type on point A to B, you will be able to solo any sh any ship in the game. And then you just have to stop mid mid halfway and, and do the repairs yourself. But more to the point of your question, I'm super excited for engineering and multi crew play. Um, the 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 more the more I think about it, the more my my how I see the game, how I want to play the game evolves. Um, I choose my ships according to the the gameplay loops that I want to be able to contribute something to, or just something goofy that I want to do at some point. But um, I'm I'm one of those people who's excited to be crew about someone else's ship. I don't have to be the pilot. I don't have to be the owner of the ship. I, I'll be I'll sit in your turret. I mentioned it earlier. I'll I'll be an engineer. I'll I can be the pilot if you if you're okay with uh, being flown into asteroids, mostly. But um, I, I think. Uh, more multi-crew, which will be a necessity due to the engineering, will then lead to more, more larger ships being flown by by people once we will all get used to not flying our own ships all the time. I think it's going to be a, a process probably. But then, yeah, hopefully larger ship ship uh, ship battles, which kind of depends on on server meshing, arguably, right? I'm not mm. I'm not I'm not an expert on those technical details, but I mean, as long as we don't have servers that I don't want to say thousand people. I'm not sure if we need those, but um, I guess you need 500 people's servers in order to be able to enable be able to enable ship combat with with uh, yeah yeah you know all those polarises and, and and stuff that people no doubt are going to field come yeah come yeah down. with 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 but more space as our were more people yeah. involved. Griffin, how about you? Do you think we're going to see, with engineering coming out, do you think we're going to be seeing more like big ship battles or more small ship battles still? I think you're going to see more people going to Daymar to visit Scooter to get rid of their <laughs> multi-crew ships. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, I think you'll still have a little of both, but I do think that there's going to be a bit of reckoning and awakening to the direction of where Chris Roberts wants to go with multi-crew gameplay, not just multi-crew, but cooperative gameplay. And um, to Major Star Stuff's point, I think that they are going to do their best to try to make sure that people can still fly ships. Um, but I, but the risk factor is exponentially greater, especially as the universe gets more populated. So even if it's not players, NPCs, um, those interactions that could happen could be very costly. Uh, if you just don't have, it could be just nothing more than just simply if you don't have a gunner. Uh, let alone an engineer and a whole lot of other folks. So I think engineering is going to make some folks reassess. And I don't mean necessarily in a bad way. I just think it's going to make them reassess. Um, I think it may have players also understand the importance of cooperative gameplay under certain circumstances. And they'll be happy to do it once they get into it. It's it's a foreign thing yeah. in gaming. Gaming has been leaning so much towards solo play, no matter what it is you do, even from us old uh, E players. <coughs> you fly a freaking Titan. A Titan's like a, a freaking two miles long, but you're the only person in it running it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Games have just been creating that dynamic because obviously uh, it's that's how you bring in money. Mm -hmm. um, and so going back to the idea of cooperative gameplay where you really have to rely on working together and trusting each other and accomplishing goals together, uh, I'm I'm 100% behind that because I miss that in gaming. I love being on a ship with a bunch of people. And I mean, any of us who've done this before, play Star Citizen by yourself and hit a bunch of bugs and you shut wow. down. Play Star mm -hmm. Citizen with a bunch of people and you get bugs, mm -hmm. you restart the game and jump back in again, mm -hmm. right? There's a different thing when we all suffer together. <laughs> Versus yeah, when you suffer by yourself. <laughs> so I like the fact that, that uh, this engineering thing is going to make us not just have a turret gunner. I'm looking for the permissions. I'm looking for the co-pilot to be able to call the tower and do navigate and do scanning for me. I'm looking forward to the engineer. I'm looking for the guy who's in the back who's going through inventory and stacking stuff. I want all that in these mm -hmm. ships. To me, that's where the real value comes when, to your point, Major Star stuff, when you pay seven bills for a ship, you know, it, you want some stuff happening on that ship other than no, just the pilot's chair, mm -hmm. you know? Unless, unless, I mean, mm -hmm. unless you don't do friends and don't like people, which I can relate to, to a certain but, extent. So, but, again, but, in, but, to the I point of crying and buying, right? <laughs> you triggered, you triggered him. Congratulations. You triggered me. I get it. Trust me, I get it. I get it. But it's called an MMO, multiplayer <laughs> online. And I get it. I get it. I, I just, I hear, I'm not saying you're vaulting to that. Because I know there are some people who genuinely, genuinely 
you know, they're yeah. isolated. Or they just, or they just want to play as a lone wolf. They just want to play as a lone wolf, right? I get it. But yeah. but I think that there's a cutoff point. I, I you know, Listen, you could fly a, a, a Connie. You could fly a A2 or a C2. Yeah. Can you fly a freaking Idris or a Javelin? Yeah. Ah, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, yeah. you cross yeah. the line at that point for me. But that's for me. I, that's I'm, I'm going to, again, in, in yeah. defense of solo Sorry. players, yeah. I will say in defense of solo players, yeah. as somebody who uh, played WoW, for yeah. up to level 25 solo with no friends. Um, it's it's entirely like sometimes you just want to get in the game and just play and you don't want to yeah. play on other people's schedules. You just you just want to enjoy yourself. Yeah. But Agreed. I think but I do think that there needs to be a balance there when it comes to that sort of thing where like eventually you're like, oh. This is like a bunker filled with Xeno threat or this is a very big asteroid. I am not going to be able to do this alone and to, to, to mine this alone. And so you were like, okay, get my friends in. I need to get, get gather other people to help out. I think, but I think that's the big, the big, yeah. again, that's they a big sort of it. balance that they have to figure mm -hmm. out is the difference between those two. But yeah. And I, I just want to say, that I'm going to, I see still something up from, from Griffin because you, you make a lot of good points, but Griffin is, 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 the, is the one who said that, remember when they did the, the Idris tour, a whole lot of people melted their interest or got rid of their interest mm -hmm. for, for something else cause, cause, because they they figured out it, it's going to be too, too much trouble or, or they, they figured out they, they didn't have enough people to, to run it. So um, I, I, every time they, they do that tour, I, 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 I don't know how, if it even doubt or anything, but some some people do get rid of their, their interest. Yeah. Again, I think the the whole multi multi crew and and massive ships and what to expect. It's 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 complex. It's long-time backers. It's people who read the fine print, people who don't read the fine print. Yeah. When Star Citizen first got uh, was on Kickstarter, like uh, games like No Man's Sky wasn't a thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, nowadays we have games like that where where things get uh, super complex. Um, if you want to run your ship, you have to to source all those minerals and then craft something, and then you know all that. I I hope that's not where we're going with Star Citizen to that micro level of of uh, of, of crafting your components ever. But um, that's just me, me personally. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, I think it's a development question. But it's also, again, uh, to the point of crying and buying, it's also a question of marketing and communication. And I think it's mm -hmm. something they need to be prepared for. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I think, finger pointing, at, oh, but you knew you, what, what you signed up for is one thing. But then, OK, but what about the 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 uh, percentage of the community that just would as you said um like to just sign in and 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 fly around their ship um kind of eve online style you know um at least tell them or i think at this point CIG needs to um figure out a way how to at what point communicate what to expect um and to make that a bit more you know, will there be all that hopium about? Okay, I'll just put on put, put blades in my my turrets and solo my A two. You know, or um, I'll I'll just have uh, five starter packs because uh, this what the website still says on that post from I don't know two thousand thirteen. Each starter pack will give me an additional free AIQ. You know, stuff stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think I'm not sure. If I had to guess, I'd say they don't even know. <laughs> yeah. But um, this there, there's just so many question marks. I think. Um, and um, yeah. I agree that just soloing larger ships, Eve Online style, is not what we want or what what you'd expect from from Star Citizen. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think it's it's, it's, it's not so easy, right? <laughs> I was gonna say Malkini. I'm gonna I'll make sure I get it right this time. Malakina uh, says that there should be a way to balance it out, and I, I don't, and, and this goes to what Star Stuff was saying too. I think that hopefully Star Stuff they will be able to develop the technology that allows the AI to function in that space for that player who maybe doesn't have the social connections, right? They can go out and play the game and still enjoy the game in some form. I'm always interested in how the UI would work. And, you know, the CIG has always stated that, you know, hopefully human players will in some ways be better than the, uh, and, and we're not talking about this areas of accuracy, but sometimes in areas of decision-making, right? Uh, a human player, if, if something's on fire, uh, your reaction time may be different than an AI or what an AI can do. And hopefully they'll develop it to some point where it gets really, really good. I hope that they do that. That will allow people. I just don't want that, to, I mean, I, but I I want multi-crew to be that. I want it to be that there's some other things you do to make multi-crew happen. Yeah. Not that I'm just on the ship flying and, you know, and I know CIG talked about they're not going to make it to a point where if you don't have an engineer, you can't fly your ship. 
they've made that very clear and and i think that's i think that is good i think they should do that i just i just want them to promote multi-crew but not restrict it right you know get, get gamers into the idea of going back to playing a game together and and winning successfully together and at the same time when if you're on late at night or your work schedule doesn't allow you or it's time for to put the kids to bed and all your friends are asleep you can still go in the game and feel like you can accomplish some things i i think that they have to it's going to be a weird thing for them to to accomplish all of this um i do want to ask one question oh paul real quick sure and it has to do with the aspect of this thing of immersion chris roberts's term because we all have our, our hills that we want to die on when it comes to what we want to see develop in the game. But I noticed that we have to be, I have to be careful, and we, I think we have to be careful that we're so focused on the thing that we want that we don't think about what it means for other aspects of the game. For example, if I were to say, I want flight to be simulated, like much more simulated, but I'm not worried about is mining simulated or I'm not worried about if medicine is simulated. You know, I just want this thing to be simulated or immersive or, you know, to the fullest level of a simulation. I don't know how CIG is going to I know they're going to structure something in between reality and fun. I know there's the dynamic of wanting as many people playing the game as possible, but at the same time, knowing that you're not going to get everybody to play the game. Mm -hmm. And if we worry about getting so many players into it, we can dilute it where we lose people. And if we make it too over the top, like what you were just saying, Star Stuff, too micro, right, you can lose another group of people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where Star Citizen is going to land in that spectrum. I want it to be have some depth to it, but I also don't want it to be a Kerbal Space Program. Yeah. You know, where there's just some people, we all have touched on Kerbal Space Program, but I don't play Kerbal Space Program every day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and, I, and so I, I don't know where they're going to find that balance when it comes to what this universe is going to look like when it's all said and done. You know? Do we think they have a long-term plan? Sorry, I'm making questions here. Um, yeah, do fine. I think they have a long-term plan for that? Or are they, because sometimes I feel like this is a step-by-step -step iteration of things and, you know, there's a lot of, missed and and do we think they right now have a long-term plan for that that they're not sharing yet or is it we're all in this together with cig and where we're um developing this as we as we continue is the game chris gonna make the game we want that's what <sighs> i'm curious about to your to your point is the game that's in the back of Chris's mind. I'm talking about what he's just talking mm -hmm. about. I'm talking about, and, and mind you, his his change could change a little bit too. Either it could change because of technology, it could change because of innovation. But let's just say in general, he knows what he wants. Is that going to be the game when this is all said and done? Am I going to like 70% of Chris's vision or 90% or 40% of Chris's vision when it's all said and done? It feels good right now, but when things change... You know, we are about keybinds changing, let alone, you know, something serious mm. in the game mm. changing. How, how are we going to yep. feel when we get the final product when it's the 1.0? Is that going to be the game that I wanted to play? Mm. You know, some people are going to say, well, he lied. He didn't tell us, you know, this thing. You know, people, that. Yeah, I mean, there are people <laughs> who feel like there's no emphasis. Like, I'm into exploration, right? I've been sitting around for 10 years waiting for exploration to pop up. And other walking around, other than exploring and picking up some fruit off a tree, there's no exploration. I've been waiting for science game. and research. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but then people who are on the other end who are fighting combat and stuff, they feel like they don't have anything or they're not getting stuff. You know, everybody's got their hill that they want to die on. I believe exploration will come. I have no, I have no doubts about it. There's too much in the game in relation to exploration. But I also feel like if you're going to make money right now on a development, PvP and combat is the way to go. Because <laughs> I don't think developing an exploration game would have brought in seven hundred million dollars, but I do believe that ships and cool stuff and fun yeah. like that brings in the revenue. And now later on, we can focus in on things like research and science and all that other stuff, you know. But I got to wait for combat, it. PVE combat, yeah. PVE yeah, combat, large ships, large multi crew, and then yeah. I, I still think I think NPC crew will be mm -hmm. may may be the solution. I don't want to say the solution, but. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just give those who, who want to fly ships solo, give them the ability to crew their larger oh, ships with, with NPCs and you're good to go, you know, just make, you're good to go within the restrictions mm -hmm. of the PVE environment of a PV, PVE multiplayer game, which then if you, if you choose not to play with other people, multi-crew, you'll be, you won't be having a chance uh, um, surviving 
outside of the the restrictive uh, restrictions of, of um, the safe safe areas or, or stuff like that. So you'll be missing I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you Default, remember, yeah. but don't forget about the AI blade too. Like AI blade is supposed to be something you can you know, slave AI into. Blades, I don't, my I, I don't like I don't like using I'll the word slave, the but that's what they A2. say. <laughs> and I and I just want to congratulate Star Stuff for triggering me by when he's when he said he CCU to BMM and triggering Griffin <laughs> when he <laughs> when, said, when said he solo. solo play. I, I don't need a Polaris. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If, you manage to, if you manage to trigger Paul, you'll you, you, you yeah. have a hat trick. He, all, right. he has, all, all you have to do is say you like the Redeemer, and, and that'll be triggered. <laughs> Redeemer, Redeemer, I mean, we all know Redeemer is your favorite ship, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, it's funny because y'all, I was, while you were talking, it's like you actually asked a question that the chat had asked. Which was interesting mm-hmm. about um, about like how much is too much, like like how in depth do we uh, are CIG going to go in terms of like like the differences between a sim and a simple game, because like if you look at all the, the even the question said if you look at all the games, uh, so you see who, uh, who who said the specific question. Uh, Danny asked him said the majority of popular games aren't very complex. Uh, do you see CIG reducing the complexity of the game to make the game more accessible to casual players? And if yes, how far should they go? And I think the answer is no. At the end of the day, this is a Chris Roberts game. And uh, one of the things, I, I, I always bring this up, but like Farm Simulator comes out pretty much yearly, is fairly complicated, and is incredibly popular. Yep. And it's only one of a genre. Like there's there's a game that I really enjoy, which is a great kind of it's a, it's it's more of a narrative game, but it's like its sim is its sort of background, which is My Summer Car, which is still getting played and updated. And it's it's a fantastic little little game by a Finnish developer. And there's lots of other games like that. There's a game that came out like Mech Engineer that came out pretty recently that's that's fairly yeah. complicated. Um, I do think that what we're, we're, we're likely to see is that CAG is going to flatten out some of the gameplay, not make it less complex because what they'll do is the actual systems and how they interact is very complex. So they want to make how you heal simple and how you get food simple. But then when they combine in terms of like, oh, do you have logistics for food and logistics for medical you have the medical goo you need or the medicine you need to be able to heal that's where the like complexity comes in where you have to like oh well now i have to make sure that if i'm going on this mission that i have enough medical supplies and i have enough food but also if you blow up then you lose all those supplies that you just had had built up for it's that sort of balance i think there's going to be a balance in terms of the complexity versus the um versus the uh the simplicity uh, and I think that's something we're going to Go ahead, start off. Oh, real quick, no, so some, sorry. Go ahead. Real quick, so some people say that they prefer a simulator as opposed to an arcade. And some other people say they prefer an arcade rather than a simulator. Yeah. Uh, Star Citizen definitely going more, more to the simulator aspect. There's some aspect of, of an arcade, but not, not as much. But that, 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 that's been my... That, 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 that's what it seems to me. So, but other people may disagree. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not the game's already too arcade for you, that's something only only you can answer. Or, or, or do you want something more simulated? Mm-hmm. Um, like, that's what Spectrum and feedback is for. So, mm-hmm. you know, they, they are looking for feedback. They won't listen to I take everything to heart, or you may be disappointed, but you have to ask yourself if. if, if what Star Citizen will become, not what it is now, but what Star Citizen will become is enough to keep me playing. Yeah, that's awesome. And how do too. and how do they manage to keep everyone that's been with the game so far invested time and and uh, some of us money? How do they keep all of us aboard? And that is again, I'm I'm repeating myself. That is a task for marketing, communications, yeah. uh, community management, you know, like translate what's happening, the plans they have or may not have as they come up, translate that into something that resonates with the the wider, uh, um, the this this very diverse community that yeah. we are. But Paul, I was going to say, you brought up, um, you mentioned World of Warcraft earlier. Yeah. And I feel like that's, that's, that's kind of how I see it. Um, that, couldn't that be a blueprint like, the way I used to play the the little World of Warcraft that I played back back in the days, um, I just level up my character without really min maxing things. I never got into crafting stuff or you know like 
like on a very uh on a on a very um entry level kind of um yeah level uh and and i'm aware there's people who do um raids and and play together with other people and really min max things or or focus on on um on jobs are they called jobs professions whatever <laughs> you know i know that exists are. i know that stuff exists but it's kind of out of my reach it's not part of how i play the game or another example i'd i'd bring up would be stellaris a totally different kind of game i know but someone who's i, I come more from a strategy um, uh, um a game point of view which is why i always get super excited whenever i see like a new tactical map for star citizen i'm like oh mm. <laughs> do it yeah. um but Stellaris is also a game. I I played a lot, not a ton, but never. I don't. I, I'm not sure how many times I got to the. See, I don't even know how how it's how it's called. The end game, the something something crisis. You know all that stuff. I, mm. But Stellaris, I think, is is another game you can play. You can have fun with as a as a strategy game. Um, passionate person. Um, but you can also then then advance to like really getting knowledge getting knowledgeable about it and really learning all those mechanics and and the intricacies of things and i feel like star citizen could be something like that yeah that there will be a way for you to play the game within a pve environment or with other pvp noobs that don't know how to play the game like but then once you want to access those those other 90 percent of the game or the other 80 percent of the game uh, there's just certain stuff that you need to deal with and that will be griffin i agree with that the fact that it's an mmo that has pve stuff but also um well you have to talk to people or at least mm. you know team up with mm. people in order to get stuff done and efficiently get, if you want to survive get the crunchy yeah. stuff down you know the the, the sort of yeah. details go ahead griffin yeah i was gonna say in relation to complexity can the game be too complex um you know i think is i think cig's theme of options is what's important to major star stuff's point right you were talking about you can still step into world of warcraft and not have to know all these other things and still find enjoyment in the game and i think that that's the way it should be but i was just going to use an example fast mentioned this earlier about when the atlas came out what he didn't say which we had said on our show the week before was that everybody was excited when the atlas came out but the week before that everybody was bemoaning freight like oh god we gotta move all this stuff i'm, I'm not i'm not doing it then the atlas comes out and everybody's like oh i'm I, i'm loving freight you know there's this swinging <laughs> back and forth that goes back and forth within the community here's something to make your bones chill CIG said, oh, wait till we introduce weight and balance on your ship, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then, whoa, you haven't thought about the fact that we haven't implemented gravity. Oh, you haven't thought about the fact that we're going to implement dynamic weather and whether you could even get off the ground. The level of complexity they could go to could be really kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, if you don't have that load master who's really into loading your ship and putting stuff in the right way, there's that auto load button, right? that allows that person to still continue to play the game. They may have to pay a couple extra bucks, wait a couple extra minutes, but they're not kept from playing the game. And they'll say, I get it. You know, that's that's the mechanic that's there for me to use to, to Star Stuff's point. As long as you can get in the game and find the enjoyment in the process of it. But there are people who've dropped into our chat sometimes in our Discord and said, hey, I'm doing something, I gotta move some stuff. And some people will say, hey, let me know where you're at. We'll come move the boxes for you. You know, there are some people who actually enjoy doing that monotonous stuff, you know. So I'm hoping that CIG kind of, again, promotes that a little bit so that people who maybe have felt left out, they feel like I'm not the great ace pilot or I'm not the great FPS person. But, dude, if you need somebody who can just load boxes or if you need somebody who needs to do the, your, your medical combat person, I'm there for you. You know, if you need the guy who's going to drive the Atlas uh, vehicle to drop everybody off. You know, I just want them to be able to make people feel like everybody has some role in the game that they can do and contribute. But to, but to the point earlier, solo players should be able to come into the universe and find their place, too. I don't want them mm -hmm. to feel like they hit some ceiling and they can't do anything else in the game. And that's a tough job for the CIG in an MMO space to create, but that's it's on them to do that. You know? Yeah. All right, let's move on to the couple of questions. Go ahead, Jasper. Oh, okay. F finish up. What are you going to say? Now, real quick, I just want to say, and I, I think if if if, if this was more of an arcade game, it wouldn't last as long. CIG said mm -hmm. they want they want the game to last ten years. If it's more of a simulator game or more complex, it it, it have a chance to, to last that long. I agree. I, I, to to kind of what Star stuff was talking about, what Major was talking about with uh, like giving the ability to have this sort of 
tactical ability because I, I watch a lot of I am a secret strategy game player for X strategy. That is what I, li I like to do. I am bad at it. I am horrible at them, but I love playing them and I enjoy enjoy, enjoy them. I'm Same. just uh, I just I cannot make it interesting. But I watch the content from people who do who are like, hey, I'm going to build tall in, in Stellaris and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. And with this, these sort of crazy strategies and these other things and like like there's like all of these sorts of nuance and stuff like that, that I think CIG could really lean into once they have most of their systems in place that will really allow for that longevity of someone going, Hmm, can I take an Aurora and turn it into the most deadly fighter known to man, you know, kind of <laughs> ideas. Uh, and I think that's, that's where the longevity of star citizen will be. So, um, in sort of like as a game released and available for people. Uh, all right. Next question comes from Gin and Tonic, who asks, people always say, make it more transparent. But what does that mean? And be specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fast cart. Uh, no, I'm hoping you make me laugh. Um, <laughs> come back to me. Come back okay. to me. <laughs> Griffin? I, I can I can try first. Go ahead, Major. Uh, sure. Um, I've. Yeah, make it more transparent. I, I think we talked, I think, Paul, you mentioned earlier, right? It's CIG. Um, what are they? Are they an indie developer still mm -hmm. at this point? Are they, you know, what what kind of transparency can they afford also as, you know, also as a company who, if you read through all that fine print print before you pledge, you know, you, you know it is also a, a company that's been growing and they have their specialists for how to word things legally and all that stuff. So um, I think there's there's a limit to what mm -hmm. they at this point still can afford in terms of transparency, you know? And I've like, we've been talking a lot about, or I've been, I keep talking about, oh, this is a job for marketing. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I'm sure by now everybody working Marketing at CIG hates me, but um, <laughs> it, it also there, there's, there's, I, I, I can tell you there's a lot of smart people working in marketing at CIG um, and probably also a lot of lawyers or people who tell them, well, no, that's not what we can say for legal reasons, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I'd repeat what I said earlier. It's a lot about, not so much about fixing things. It's more about fine tuning. It's less about what they say it's more about how they say it and more this translating their messages the whatever gets released whatever gets uh, communicated what's what's about to change taking that step back and and thinking of translating that for an audience that doesn't I, we're at the point of doesn't know what an alpha is yeah. <laughs> yeah. um and that 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 to me could be a way of being transparent in terms of so maybe not transparency is the, the the thing that I'd ask for, but more translating things, mm -hmm. um, putting putting more effort into translating things for a different audience. That's not long time back. It's not even people who are right now in chat on Twitch and YouTube watching this, you know, because you all, we all have a different understanding. Um, but there's also newer players who maybe are not aware of Astropub, uh, Morphologies, you know, you name them, uh, Fast Cut Griffin and, and your your project, who come into the game and who their, their sole source of information may be the CIG website or maybe yeah. the, the Star Citizen YouTube channel, you know, at least for a certain amount of time before they dive in deeper. And I think for those, transparency, in my opinion, could mean just translate things in a way that they understand better what to expect now and in the future. And I think this in the future, arguably, there's a lot of things that CIG themselves don't know at this point. But um, that's also something they could, I mean, that's something they share with us. Uh, Jared does every week, right? They're fairly transparent about transparent about that. That things are subject to change and all that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Griffin. And now you can answer. Now, now the two of you can answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Griffin? Yeah, you're, you're what is transparency? Yeah, your, your answer is a good one. Um, it depends. Um, a lot of the older backers will use this as their statement in relation to when Kickstarter kicked off, right? That there would be a, a feeling of mutual partnership in the development process um, and that we would be well informed at, uh, at, 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 I don't want to say at every level of decision, but at, at, at certain decisions. I think there were assumptions in that phrase. Um, 
I think when it comes to transparency, I've always wondered how much transparency do we as the backers get? Are we getting 40% transparency, 70% transparency? And I think to Star Stuff's point, there's a certain level of stuff we're just not going to know. We just don't, and we don't need to know probably. Um, we have to be careful what we wish for too. When CIG was transparent about their one year calendar of work mm -hmm. uh, and displayed that to us, some of us couldn't handle that transparency because when that calendar would change or when something got dropped or something got pushed, some of us in the company railed against it. We said that they were lying to us or they broke their promises, but that was all a part of development. Things change in development. Um, any good company projects themselves out, not just in one year periods, but one year, three year, five year, even 10 year periods. And there are very smart people who sit down and do that when it comes down to a corporation in the business, especially when you're talking about the type of money that CIG is bringing in. I know there's a lot of feeling that sometimes CIG is just shooting from the hip. And I'm sure there are times when things have popped up and maybe they've done that. But I think overall, they do have a plan. I think you were saying this earlier, Star Stuff, do they have a, a, a roadmap within? They do internally. Um, does that roadmap change? Um, I remember, Paul, you were around back when the uh, the innovation of being able to land anywhere on a planet came up. You mm -hmm. know, for those who weren't around back then, uh, Star Citizen would have been like Starfield. You would have said, I want to land, and you would have been just a little cinematic, and you'd have sat back in your chair and watched the process. Uh, and we were told that eventually we'd be able to land everywhere, but it would be years later. And all of a sudden, they were able to do it. Well, I know for a fact that probably changed a whole lot of stuff in the roadmap, when all of a sudden now we can land on planets. Uh, we just don't know to what degree did it change things. Um, so, you know, asking for transparency is also, are you asking for transparency about every aspect of the game or just the aspect that you care about? You know, because if we did that, we'd be talking a whole lot of stuff. So, yes, I don't want to default to the whole thing that CIG tells us a lot, but they do. Thousands of hours of videos, documentation, newsletters every week, tons of stuff that they give, way more than probably any other gaming company that I've ever been involved with. Um, but at the same time, I know there are times when we wish they were, to your point, Star Stuff, clarity in communication and consistency in communication. Fastcard mentioned this earlier. If you say we're going to put out something on Squadron 42 more frequently, do that. If you say we're going to do pillar talk, do that. Um, if you're just going to test the waters, then say that. We're doing mm -hmm. this to see how it goes. Say that. But once you say we're going to be out here quarterly, you better believe this community is going to be looking for it. And yeah. if you change up and you don't say it or you just let it fall by the wayside, there's a level of accountability that goes there. Not just because of money or but things just because of the fact that, yeah, things yeah. change. Right. Yeah. Something it, changes. Say we're not going to do it. I, I'll jump in and just say that like my, sure. my definition is basically that. But if you if you think things change, you tell us. Because yeah. like I, I one of the things that drives me up the wall is like the. It, Benoit does a great example of explains has explained multiple times what happened and why they had to go from RMQ or from MMQ to RMQ, mm -hmm. what that means. But they knew back in March that they had to do it. And they told us nothing about RMQ until July. And that's when we, they just sort of mentioned they're doing an RMQ test and everyone's like, what is an RMQ? And then in August they said it again. And eventually they, they, they explained what it was. But we didn't know what was going on. They didn't explain yeah. what was going on. They didn't explain that, that, that that's what was changing and they had to get this done for this. And then they, uh, when they, when they, uh, they, because CIG does this thing where they, if they have something goes wrong, they don't say anything until they have the solution. Mm -hmm. Once until the solution is right. And then the solution oh, yeah. is out. And which is, it makes sense. But if you Socks want. Socks was the example. Socks, yeah. they did that with Socks. Remember the whole transition there wasn't until the year later that they, they felt that it wasn't going to work. So they had to change it. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like it's it'd be they would be get more credit for being transparent when things go wrong and they need to change them. They say this doesn't work. We're going to do we're, we are going to work on something else. We don't have that 100 percent down right now, but we have we have some leads and we'll get back to you, mm -hmm. even if it's something that's sort of minor. But, the, you know, that like this obviously caused a delay in the release. I think that would be a bit more transparent. Like, like for instance, people get got on CIG for saying Oh well, three point two four didn't delay, or three point two yeah three point four didn't really for, delay four point zero, and it it probably didn't. It's probably the RMQ thing that's delayed four point zero to to uh, to to quarter four at the very least, and mm -hmm. they didn't say anything until recently about that. And it's like oh well, you wouldn't have gotten said you wouldn't have eaten as much crow if they had said that before because people assume that this is what's causing this and that sort of thing. So. Uh, and I think that's the real issue when someone says to be transparent is 
they want to at least be told what's going on and not just yeah. be told after the fact when something goes wrong and then be have to kind of guess. And that's not mm -hmm. a one size fits all. But that is what a lot of people, especially older backers, back to this, uh, you know, backed for. We wanted that sort of sausage making experience. So, um, so go ahead, fast card. Um, something Griffin said that made me think about this. But you know, to, to his point, once you say the Polaris will be out by IAE, the Polaris better be out, out by, by IAE, IAE, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the pitchfork for real. So I, this is not trying to be funny, but please reread the question so because I want to make sure that, that what I have typed here is, okay. is, is actually relevant. Okay, she says uh, people always say, "quote Make it more transparent." Unquote. What does that mean? Be specific. Uh, like I, I mentioned it before, but maybe have more pillar talk at quarterly or at least uh, biannually. Uh, Ten for the chairman or letter from the chairman, and they they cut back on that. Mm -hmm. And people she, she seem to respond well when they hear directly from, from Chris Roberts. So, uh, do we know why <laughs> they, they, they don't respond they, well? They respond. I don't know about well. <laughs> It depends on what, what, what the topic is, but but did, uh, did, do we know why they, they seem to come back on 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 those, or have they not said anything about that? He's coding. Yeah. Coding. Yeah. Okay. He is legitimately. I, I think. All right. I think it's a matter of just time and effort, because like time and effort. If I if I remember, they haven't said specifically, but. If I'm gathering correctly, Chris is still one of the major decision makers for anything that happens in the game. So he still has to sign off or is the final sign off. I'm okay. sure it's not just Chris, because from what I've heard from CIG developers is that Chris is he's not this sort of dictator who's running around swinging a scepter being like, it's my way or the highway. He's very it's it's <laughs> like, a, like a lot of game development. It's, it's very give and take. And you have other people there who know maybe know more than you in certain things. And you kind of talk back and forth. There's a lot of discussions back and forth. And there's definitely like a management team that has to approve of a lot of the big changes. So he's probably just and, doing meetings uh, all the time. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And it, it's been stated, but um, it's been feeling like they've become less transparent at, as time passes. Up until like 2017, 2018, they had a more homegrown feel uh, in, in the developer feel. But now people can argue that they've become more corporate. So it, they, they're, they're tightening up on what they say and how they say it. Um, and I, 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 some, I think Griffin alluded to that they, they're trying to avoid spoilers, especially when it comes to Squadron 42, right? They have a monthly Squadron 42 um, newsletter, mm -hmm. but it's mostly just tech stuff. Uh, sometimes you may, you, may see, you may see something like, oh, like a, a keyword, it's a Titan suit every once in a while, but uh, mostly it's just technical stuff. So. And also, uh, part of the, um, the blame is actually the community. As I, I alluded to before, they used to have the um, progress tracker or the um, roadmap out for a year, but you know, whenever something didn't meet the expectations of the community, um, there would be a lot of complaints. And that now it's just one quarter, so um, part of it is it, our fault. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying our, but I'm saying you know, I'm trying to be polite here. <laughs> but yeah, part of it is our fault that, that, that they become less open. But you know, in the future, I'm hoping that they have a 12 hour documentary or making of for Star Citizen. Oh, yeah, I'll watch it, and um, yeah. And you know, maybe make it make an hour of documentary for each year. <laughs> so w whenever this thing finally comes out, we have a a, a whole lot to, to go through. Because I mean, but that's something in the future and something I'm, I'm looking forward to. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, five more questions. Um. Okay. I'm going to handle some of these more salty ones first. Uh, Sir, mm -hmm. Sir, Sir Tongi asks, how can CIG restore the faith of backers that are no longer impressed by words and pretty pictures? Uh, release. Delivery. Yeah. Yeah, delivery. No no one is impressed by words and pretty pictures. I like words and pretty pictures, but. I was going to say, they, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, like, like, they're nice, but I'm Good not. Point. I'm I'm not impressed with with uh, with just words of pretty pictures. I want to like like I like the lore. I love the lore. I know Major is really into like the the languages and stuff like that. That's all cool. But I'm sure both of us would like to see it in game. <laughs> We'd like to that's, be able to play uh, it. Oh, yeah. preach it, preach it. <laughs> I mean, all that lore that we know from all that lore that we know about exists 
But where is it in the game? I feel like 0.5% of the law law is in game, in game. And can be experienced. It's all like in our mind palaces, the, yeah. the, the ones that you have that, you know. And, and that's the thing. Yeah. Sorry, it's, triggered. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that's the point. I think, I think no one, I think almost all of us would just rather just have it, it be in game and release. And I think that's, yeah. that's the key. And I think even CIG knows that. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's a great uh, tweet that I saw by... Um, by Space Tomato, where like Satisfactory went from being pretty steady, it had some good money, good money flow, and then like when it released, it went from like this to like this, like it was like mm -hmm. like a four hundred percent sales increase, like in one week, mm -hmm. and it was like yeah, because you released the game, yeah, like people won't buy it in early access, but you release it, someone's gonna go, oh, I've heard about this, buy, and yeah. it just causes huge sales. Like Squadron Forty Two comes out when it's released. We're going to see CIG go from being like, oh yeah, we're making a hundred million to if it's if it hits the impact that I think it probably will, and if CIG does doesn't screw it up, then I mm. you could see it getting like that amount of money in a month. Like we could see a hundred yeah. million just being just getting generated in in time that we have not seen in at CIG before. Here's so, the question: do, do you think they'll actually publish that? That's not crowdfunding anymore. That's actually sales. That's sales. So I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If they'll if track it. Put that on, on a website. It will be a whole different beast. It will yeah. be Squadron Forty Two. Will be. I mean, it's a different game, obviously, but it's the 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 Star Citizen equivalent to to Starfield, right? Yeah. It's, it's that's what it's going to be. Yeah, my, my, my point is, I'm not sure if they, they'll, they'll track that track or, it? Or, or, or make it public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, that's a good question because I think the the sales will probably be on a that's separate a, website, so it's hard to sell. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. To answer that question, I would say the same thing. Just delivery. I've really felt like at this point, this is where CIG has to was to put your money where your mouth is, kind of thing. Um, you know, in light of the release of Squadron Forty Two. Uh, the, the the backers have patiently waited over the last three years uh, when they knew that resources were pushed over to Squadron. So at this point, you know, game features, game content, stability, all those things leading up to 1.0, which is what I'm hoping when we go to CitizenCon this year, we'll see what that road is to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, God forbid he does another 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, because mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, we stopped at 3.10 in 2016, Paul, yeah. and it turned into 3.24. <laughs> so hopefully we will get an idea of what should, what what's going to be between us and then what we can expect in 1.0, because Chris's statement of a commercially viable product that people can come back to sounds great. But mm -hmm. there's still questions that people in the community want to know, like, what will that look like? So uh, I think delivery at this point, that's what it's got to be about. No more speculation, no more, you know, it just needs to be getting stuff in our hands to build the confidence back that they're going to deliver. Yeah. I think we all got a chance to answer. So, uh, yeah, this has been a triggering episode. I just yeah. to say that. <laughs> I, I'm I'm. I'm if I, if I may add, I'm not sure if I, I answered it. the question already, but I, I've been talking so much. Sorry for taking so much time. You're good. Um, maybe just, I'd say it's a really great question. I'd also say, can I can I write a paper about it and get back to you? Because I think it's also <laughs> a fairly complex question. Yes. Like in product, marketing, communication, we, we talk about a lot about customer experience, customer journeys. So um, I think just... I think it's a fairly complex question and it requires really to to sit back and 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 look at the different archetypes personas of 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 uh, customers that that mm -hmm. um, we have so far and what may their reasons be of no longer you know believing in the project or, or or dropping out and then really addressing is is this something we can address with more transparency whatever that may be is this something we can uh, solve with delivering you know I, th I think it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I will say, give more budget to Jared. Might be yes, the ultimate solution. <laughs> Jared is. Uh, he gets a lot of flack sometimes, but I think he's pretty. He's been gotten better at the job that he has been handed, and he's gotten every year. He's bet. He's doing better and better. He's still sarcastic, I mean, but I love him. <laughs> I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping Jared. Jared, Jared doesn't burn out because sometimes mm -hmm. if, 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 he looked tired a couple of times during this year. So I'm like, I mean, are you okay, Jared? <laughs> I mean, he's he will be one of the people we we only only see him uh, on on screen right e each week, and and that's mostly what we know about what he does. Unless I think we saw the him recording or being there for the recording of the the uh, the, the the score or something mm -hmm. for for I guess Squadron Forty Two. But I presume that knowing what I know about how corporate companies work, 
um, he'll be one of the people who's in meetings seventy-five mm. percent of the day, and then mm. what we get to see is twenty percent of his work. And I'm I'm very sure. I'm sorry, I have to fan person here a little bit. Yeah. I'm sure he has this much of a list and multiple pages of things he knows that he would like to address and and create content about. And he only has so much time and so much budget, which I think largely relies on on the the subscriber money, right? Mm -hmm. um, to address that. So I think. I'm 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 serious when I say increase his budget. Yeah. Uh, duplicate Jared. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you on that one, especially with a major activation like Squadron. Like you need that money, and he is that sort of the the person who's built the trust and relationship. So yeah. Um. All right. Next next question comes from. Uh, I'll, I'll, again, getting the salty questions out, and then we'll kind of move on to the last ones. So we got four questions left. Jack of no nades. Uh, no nades. Jack of no trades says. Can you can you guys uh, since you guys are mostly on board with the Atlas, where do you draw the line on monetization? Repair drones, mining bits, skills, reputation. My concern is that the the more they monetize, the less room they leave for progression. Wow. The only issue with that is is that as long as CIG remains with their statement of whatever they provide, you can get it in the game and work for it in the game. I don't see where the hitch is. Um, that, that's probably my only issue. I know people still struggle with the 90 day wait period, but if it's something that's going to be in the game, it's still a business guys. And they got to bring in revenue some type of way. Um, and, and, and that revenues, and we don't know what the final revenue model is going to be for CIG. So mm -hmm. sometimes when people say cash grab, it's like, well, yeah, everything's a cash grab. Um, we always have to spend money. Uh, there's also the thing that you don't have to spend the money. If, as long as you can get it in the game, it just takes a little patience. But I'm I'm, I'm only referring to if they're talking about like items like the Atlas. Mm. Uh, I know there's a desire to want it right away, but it's not that urgent. You know, we didn't have the Atlas for the, God only knows how long and we still did things. So mm. um, to me, as long as they provide those items and you can still get them, then the monetization doesn't bother me. Uh, I can jump in. Go ahead, Vascar. Uh. Uh, do not charge one hundred dollars for a monocle, and do not charge the same price as, a, as for an in-game shirt as you would for a real shirt on a website. Uh, people who may not recognize those terms—that's something that Eve Online did twelve years ago, uh, uh, fourteen years ago—and mm -hmm. it, it was a disaster. <laughs> it was uh, a, a protest in Vita, that the uh, that the commercial economic hub in in, in game, and yeah, it, it was bad. So as long as they don't do do things or do similar things like that, they should be fine. Um, I I think there's a, there's a there is a there is a how to put this there, there is a limit, but I also think that CIG crossed the Rubicon well long ago, like way long ago when it comes to like <laughs> what they will sell, they sold, they'll sell everything. Mm -hmm. We we know that there's no, there's no limit. The, 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 the thing that is really important to, to the, the, the more important question is more, will they sell progression? And yeah. in a, in a way that is more than just ships, and I don't think they will, mostly because they have a lot of people at CIG who want to make a game. And the mm -hmm. sailing of what they have now feels more of a, we have to keep the lights on so we can make the game, and less of a, how can we monetize everything? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it feels less of a, like people in a boardroom with smoke and, and being like, what's the quarter earnings like kind of kind of discussion and more of a bunch of like engineers who are like, Oh my God. Oh Jesus. This, these, these, these bills need to be paid. We need to figure something out. What do we got to do? We we're like our, our quarter. It seems less planned and more reactive. The CIG is being more reactive and less planned when it comes to a lot of these monetization stuff. And sometimes they're just kind of seeing what they can do to make money where like, Oh, this event's going on. Let's sell some things here. Maybe we can make more money. Um, and, I, I do think that they're that that is will where they'll they'll draw the lines. Things like reputation, things like like stats, those sort of things. I think they're going to keep those game focused and mostly focus on cosmetics and game and like ships and such. So, Paul, I'm imagining Chris Robert petting a white cat, and I'm liking the imagery. <laughs> uh, Major, 
I think? don't think I have anything meaningful to add. So uh, okay. instead of going about one of my monologues and then uh, I'll just shut up <laughs> <laughs> and just say I agree with what you said. Okay. Um uh, some, some people are saying saying like they I thought they're already selling progression. Uh, they're selling ships. Ships aren't necessarily progression. Ships are sort of like a shortcut to to get certain aspects. But like a freelancer is good. It's a hundred plus dollars, but it's also uh, garbage when you when you get it. It like this this the equipment and all this stuff and the freelancer is is not good. The yeah, and you can get it in game. <laughs> yeah. And you can for get free, it in game basically. for free, you know, it, it, so, and the thing you'll need to make that, sh that shit better is in game components. And those components are only earnable in game. And some of those components, we don't know, not now, but maybe in the future, they've talked about reputation gating and uh, those sorts of things. And those missions will be, that get you the most money are reputation gated. So there's a lot of like progression that is not related to just, I have ship now. Um, so mm -hmm. the, They'll never sell, sell reputation. I don't think they will. I think that's the line they'll draw. I hope not, <laughs> at least. So, uh, all right. So the next question comes from Northern Trooper, who says, "Howdy, miss miss y'all, miss you, soul citizens, and all and y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on of no communication on concierge support from CAG?" Do you think they will update the concierge benefits or communication <laughs> once Squad Forty Two, or is it too much wishful thinking? I don't know what what do, what do they mean. Is it just like concierge is not responding? Is that what's going on? I don't know this. So. I haven't had that problem. I personally haven't, and I haven't had to. I haven't written into them recently, but I have within the last six months. And when I've written into them, I usually get a response within twenty four hours. Mm. Um, so I, I really haven't run into yeah. any problems i but i you know the, the the two areas that cig has always had an issue with is their customer support and uh the back with merchandising back in the day um i don't know what how those areas are staffed anymore at cig because they've grown over the years and because i've been concierge so long i have no comparison i don't know how standard support is versus concierge right. i know there are a lot of concierge mm -hmm. benefits that people still look forward to um the concierge page uh, concierge information uh, and it's a weird balance because obviously they, they can't make concierge people so exclusive that they get things that the other backers don't get and at the same time there is this idea of feeling like there's a benefit to being concierge uh, we can't get secret information that nobody else gets or something like that yeah. right uh, it'd be cool if they did a concierge video just a video that was just directed to concierge people about things that are going on in the community and other people could still see those things too but I, I, I wish there were benefits that extended um nothing that makes us over regular backers but just something that's like okay you know this is kind of cool you know i don't i don't know i don't know what else they could do um you know we get our little virtual items <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, but that's about it you know nothing, i know there's nothing i hate that top hat i have no use for it yeah the monocle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know the, the question. I, 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 as far as I know, they're pretty good at that. There may be some issues where like they're not help, help desk isn't getting back in time. And a lot of that can be just because staff, it, it just, it's a, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a and timing. Issue. Cause you, you don't want to contact, uh, time to do an IE or in Victor suite. That yeah. is a bad mm -hmm. time to expect something fast. Mm -hmm. I have, I think I have, I have two recent examples that I can actually give. One, I don't want to talk about too much into detail what it was about, mm -hmm. because I think that's one of the concierge benefits we have when we talk to, to them about anything I want to say, web shop mm -hmm. hangar related stuff mm -hmm. um, that they may be able to do for us. Um, I've been getting, uh, I've been hearing back from them within, as you said, 24 hours, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I've got another still open ticket i i want to say i have to double check um no, no i know it's still open um that is in-game related so and and i can be transparent what that is about because it's it's probably one where they're like yeah we don't have time to to get back to him about that because that was um some in-game bug the uh the hull c related and i ended up with that um cargo still awaiting transfer on screen and i was like i'm mm. not going to there's no way in hell i'm going to I'll play the game for a whole patch with that message on my screen um, for every ship that I fly, even yeah. fighters, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll just write a ticket and see if they can 
do a do a character reset uh, fr from their end if that's still a thing, whatever. And I didn't hear from them back. But I understand that that's not something that have like hundreds of those requests. So I don't expect them to to uh, necessarily get back to me about that. So, but I feel like, yeah, you know, as you said, should there be what kind of an advantage should there even be for for being a, a concierge? Right? Like I think we. There's benefits we already have get access to, like a like a short line and easy access to to concierge support. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's it's good for what it is. I'm personally I don't expect them to to give us more. And support. at this point, you gotta wonder what what is the ratio between concierge and non concierge in in, in the community? Because I. I, yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I want to say mm. 70, 80 percent of us maybe concierge <laughs> at this point. I'm, yeah. I have no Everybody's idea. Everybody's concierge these it, days, it feels, right? Yeah. It feels like it, it, there's a lot. I mean, but you, if you think about it, that is incredible because concierge is a thousand dollars, right? It is, yeah. So maybe maybe it feels like that because we're, we're in a bubble with ourselves. So that's why it feels high. Maybe it's more like uh, forty percent. We have no way of, of, of knowing. I've always had a good good um, good result when I had to deal with support. Um, the one thing I feel, I, I I I feel bad for them during the whole FAC Lightning uh, debacle, uh, where they didn't offer one hundred twenty months for the. Um, but not the concept, but to release the, uh, the, uh, the FAC, and you had to put in the ticket to let them know that you did not have uh, 120 months, and they had to do it manually. I, I feel bad for them, but I, I, I put that ticket in, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, typically, I did get back to me within 48 hours, and most of the time, they get back to me within 24 hours. 24 hours. Just, uh, the first time they didn't was because at the bottom of the citizen con page, they say that if you, are, if you have a disability or you, you require um, additional help, put in this concierge, uh, put in a, a support ticket. And I've done that, and, and, and that's taken longer to um, to get back to me. But that, that's understandable because you know, by, by the, I, I put it, I put in a ticket as soon as the, the, the citizen con, citizen con uh, stuff is announced. So it's month and month and month before the actual event. So I, I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Let's move on. We've got uh, two more questions. Uh, Iris Dreadtide asks: Since we're we are investors and people are foolish enough to play to pay CIG to QA test, what does CIG duties to us? We're not investors. That's 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 a, that's a, that's a term. <laughs> that is that is my 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 trigger. We're not investors because investors get it. No, mine too. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, like CIG calls us backers for a reason because it's, it's a legal term, and uh, but yeah, uh, we're, since we're, uh, and people who are foolish enough to pay pay CIG to QA test, what's CIG's duty to us? Am I a fool to expect uh, to interact with Star Citizen as a game? Am I entitled for wanting an end uh, end goal vision write up on their website so I know where their dev is going? I think we've talked a little bit about this. No, I I, I do think that there's definitely some some level of CIG has to kind of explain what's the vision, where are we going? And we used to have this video called what is star citizen, which was a pretty okay kind of overview of what the plan is. But mm -hmm. I do, I do think that having a, a general overview of what the game is, where it's going to go is probably not too much to ask, especially at this point, because there's so many things that have changed in star citizens development, not necessarily sort of the big stuff, like a lot of the big stuff we still have, like Death of a Spaceman and all those sorts of things seem to be still around. But more of a, like Death of a Spaceman, for instance, went from being you get recovered randomly, like fade out, fade back in to this whole like regen, like lore bit and like like different aspects. And some of the details have, have sort of changed over time. But I do think that CAG definitely needs to reaffirm and it's going towards 4.0 and eventually 1.0 what the game is. What do y'all think? I just want to re-clarify we are not investors. We've invested time mm -hmm. and maybe emotion, but financially we are backers and I, I can I don't think that's stressed enough, especially for, 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 for maybe the new backers. All the backers to, to, to recognize that. Yeah. I understand the question. I, I think it's a fair question. And, and you know, what is it we're getting 
what, what comes back our way. Mm -hmm. You know, what we do in support is the equivalent of what public television here in the States does. You know, you, you watch public television and you see, oh, they're doing Sesame Street and they're doing this cooking show and this, that, and the other. And they say, hey, give us $50 and we'll send you a DVD for, you know, this cooking show. Uh, but I can't go tell my public station what programs they need to show or when they need to turn them on or what, what schedule it. I, that you don't have that voice. You know, what it is is a way of saying, cheering you on for what you're doing, and we want to find a way to support you so that you can continue doing it. Now, the question is, what is the it? And to Paul's point, CIG, I said this earlier, has thousands of hours and thousands of documents out there that basically say a general direction of where they're going. I think it would be good that if we got some type of, fast cards, you mentioned this earlier, the letter for the chairman, the letter for the chairman was kind of like a state of the union kind of question or a state of the game kind of thing and where we're going. And so I would love to see things like that come out of it. Something that annually, Chris puts out an annual letter that says, this is where we are. This is what our setbacks were. They did this last year after Citizen Con, he and Richard Tyra, right? Uh, and Benoit, all three of them commented. I thought that was one of the best letters that we ever got. Uh, not just hearing from Chris, but hearing from other respected people within the gaming, uh, within the company that gave people some assurances, for lack of a better term, of where we were going. And I just think that needs to be reinforced from time to time. That annual letter that goes out that everybody looks forward to, whether it's post Citizen Con or po during their vacation break in January, where we kind of know this is where we're going with the company, this is the direction we're going, uh, and how we feel right now. And I would love to get something like that. To me, that would be satisfactory. But uh, beyond that, because things change, we are so good to making things that CIG says Bible and use that word promise when things aren't promised. There are aspirations. There are things that the goals that they're shooting for. And when they don't hit them, it hurts. Admittedly, it, we get disappointed. And I'm sure they do, too, because they that's what they want to be able to do. But if technology doesn't allow it or time doesn't allow it or even community sentiment doesn't allow it. We have to be open enough and ready to pre be prepared to take that. So, I'm sorry. I know I've kept up going to stuff. Uh, but what is that word that they typically do after every patch when they say what went well, what what what, 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 didn't, what didn't go well? They they usually do that after, after oh, every patch. Oh, uh, not the burn down. It's. Oh. Um, uh, you, you remember when popped yeah, about now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If, they, if they came back and doing that again, that that would help. Post mortem. Post mortem. Thank yeah. you, Jenna. Post mortem. Post -mortem. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think I've seen those in, in, in after we can pass. In a while. Okay. It's another, another thought, example. So stuck up. It's another example of something that comes and goes, and we don't hear why it went. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's 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 kind of the 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 point that I would like to make. Legally they owe us close to nothing i want to say right we don't even own the ships that we think we buy <laughs> mm -hmm. if you look uh, if you check out the fine print but um i i would pose the question what what would maybe be smart for them to do mm -hmm. so i mean we just make us feel like mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't want to say feel respected because it's like no <laughs> but um you know just make make people feel involved uh which which is what they they've been doing uh, mm -hmm. a lot but um yeah i think the letter letter from the chairman like i could be a quarterly thing you mm -hmm. know just to keep keep us like oh that's it's oh no we we've, we haven't been hearing from 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 them about and all this and then we take uh, someone in chat earlier said then then we as the community take over the narrative and create the narrative right i think this this letter from the chairman could be a quarterly um that's what I propose, a uh, way of shaping the narrative over the course of the year, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And then we've something to talk about for the, uh, for the remainder of the quarter. And then, yeah, just, just a bit more, I don't want to call it hand-holding, but just <laughs> making us feel involved with, with uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. give us that glimpse into Chris's brain. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's always a danger thing, though, because it's Chris's brain. <laughs> yeah. uh, Be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. The last question we have is from Northern Trooper, who asks, we've seen ships in game uh, with Evocati to PTU to live. From all your experiences, should CIG release a ship to Evocati for, for, for pre-balancing and bug smashing or reserve some uh, ships to be released for live for that surprise? 
So would you prefer CIG release the like a new ship to Ivacati first, like a brand new ship, like, hey, here you go. And then and then it go to the PTU and be live or it then to kind of hold it away from the, the Ivacati PTU and just when they go live, they go, here's the pa- Sap- 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 Raven Peregrine kind of thing. Didn't they do that for the STV? Like that was Citizen Con a couple of yeah. years ago. They did it as STV. So and- they, they have done that. Yeah, they have done that, and that's that's the question: is which one do you prefer? Yeah, oh. I don't I don't mind them doing it with Ivakati because they're testing some new game mechanic that they haven't had before. But if it's something that we're familiar with, like for example, the Peregrine, it you know it was a racing ship, and they had the other two ships ahead of it that they designed. So I didn't mind them dropping that. One of the things I the IG used to do was when they would show up and somebody stream flying a ship that nobody, you know, all of a sudden popped up. I love that. That was a great way to introduce things. Uh, not because of the streamers, but just the fact that it was, it brought a certain level of excitement and it showed that, Hey, there's the ship it's running. They've there. They're, it gave us progress. Uh, so little things like that they did. I appreciate it much more, but if there's a new thing being introduced, if you're introducing, I don't know that, and I'm, I don't say the band of merchantmen, but if you're introducing, hey. stuff, oh, like the, um, <laughs> the, 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 the the, the expanse the expanse right uh if you're going to introduce the expanse and now we've got a refinery and it's being done on a ship and even though refining's in the game if they feel that it needs to be tested ahead of time then fine but when we got the valkyrie we were sitting in citizen con and the freaking valkyrie flew on the screen you know that was yeah. great you know so it, it just all depends but if, if the technology doesn't block it my attitude is go ahead and give it to the folks and, and let them have it but if if they need the evocati let the evocati test it out was the atlas in evocati yeah. No, it was okay. PTU. It wasn't PTU though. Oh, it PTU. Oh, okay. It went oh, right. yeah, no, it went no. One day, that one day it, it was in PTU, and then it kicked it out the next day. It wasn't. It was it, teased one day. Next day it was in PTU, and two days later it was that, it was really live, right. kind of right. Like, if if I remember like, correctly, because I, I covered this on Troll Talk, there was a point when Eva Cotty only had access, even though it was in PTU. It, only yeah. Eva Cotty had access right. to it because right. we didn't right. have yeah, an Eva exactly. Cotty because we didn't have an Eva Cotty for three point two four point one. It was just straight to live, right? And so they gave right. they gave them to Eva Cotty members, and then they gave them to Wave One. And then right, that's what I, yeah. yeah, they yeah. slowly rolled it out to all those people. So, um, yeah. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. So, arguably, with with uh, the the unannounced ships that we're still expecting this year, there's they they don't even they wouldn't even have a chance to bring it all to Evocati first, right? Because that that won't align like Evocati phases being there and and and, and being being on and off, and then. I think I think we'll we'll see a few ships this year that that um, everybody will be surprised about. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I'm here I, for and it. I, and I'm a Griffin. Right? It, 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 it depends on the complexity and if they're introducing a new mechanic or a new yeah. feature. If, if 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 it's something that you know they're introducing crafting or introducing blueprints or introducing base building or introducing what have you science research, then Evocati should have yeah. it first, especially if it's if it tied to a ship. If it's something like racing or, or another fighter, they, they can they can just drop it. Or a Crusader starter or what have you, you know, something that doesn't introduce, mm-hmm. as you said, a, a new mechanic, but just just like, you know, we have a blueprint for that. It's just mm-hmm. now we, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Uh, there's, there's one more question here. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last question, this was asked earlier, but the person had to leave and then come back. Uh, from YouTube, and we'll, this will be the last one, which is, if you're still taking questions, I'd like to put your inputs and suggestions on a focus group slash PR preview channel of players to check for blind spots that CIG may miss. Now, this is something that I, I talked about many years ago, mm-hmm. and I think we've this has been kicked around the community a couple of times, where yeah. one of the things that CIG could easily do is set up a group of people who are, like a board of people who are not... CIG members, but backers who might be under some sort of NDA or something like that, where CIG can p- pass by ideas. They can go, we don't know how this the community will react. Let's talk to the community in a way that the people who know the community well enough so that we can ask them questions. And then those people can give, say like, oh, this is really stupid. You're going to word it like this. You're going to get blowback from here, here and here because CIG doesn't have the time, the money or the energy to go to every corner of the community and see how communities are going to react. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that that is something. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I, the problem I have with that is that you'd have to find people you really like or really trust you, and even with an NDA, and at that point, just hire them 
<laughs> if you're going to take their labor, <laughs> just hire them, even if it's just like as a consulting thing. And a lot of these issues don't necessarily need to have some sort of shadowy cabal of backers who are who are uh, answering questions. Just just pay for marketing research. Just pay somebody yeah. who has the time and the yeah. money and energy to do it and just have them do it. You have all of the information. You can uh, give it to a marketing research team who can then just contact those people and find those find people who can who they'll get information from. This is this isn't some new like voodoo science. Like we've been doing this, you know, the marketing's been doing this for like a hundred years, if not they more. They do need us to get the the, the information that uh, we, we could give them. There's yeah. professionals who can do that on a larger scale and 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 answer all those questions. Yeah. yeah. And there's plenty of companies. I worked for a company that did marketing research. So I know I know like like I yeah. I've worked with companies like Clorox and um you know, or PG&E and, &E and uh, mm. you know, Johnson's and stuff like that in the past as a, as a consultant and as a, as a brand, not a brand manager, but as a, I forgot what the term was, the term was, but basically I, I wrote pitch decks and proof, proofreaded them for some other people who are higher up to talk to, to make those, those, those statements. But I've, I've sat in those rooms where they, with a two-way glass and seeing, you know, what's going on and taking down notes and stuff like that. So these, these existed for a while. <laughs> they, they have these Someone tools. So. Someone in chat says most marketing researchers doesn't understand backers. I'd say quite the contrary. I think if they know their stuff, they understand will understand backers, and mm -hmm. maybe CIG will even learn a thing or two about uh, about backers that they didn't know before. Yeah. And didn't, all I'm going to say is, it, oh, go ahead. I said, didn't doesn't Eve have a council? I, thought, I was going to do it. Count the yeah, yeah, Eve, 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 Eve has a yeah, council. Go ahead. And, and Paul, you're right. We've been talking about this for a long time, um, that I wish that CIG did something. I, I never thought about it being on a payroll kind of thing. Um, you can bring greater accountability if you do that. Um, but I would agree 100%. I wish they would just have, and you could just rotate. Let people be on that thing for six months or three months or something. Rotate it around. Um, but it just needs to be, anybody knows anything about motion pictures and film? When they cut a film, they often do what they call test screening. Mm -hmm. where they bring in some people, Same they thing. screen the film and get responses from those people and say, what do you think of this film? And if they say it sucks, they'll go back and reshoot, recut, do some other stuff to the film. So I, I think that if you had that demographic that they brought in, and even if it's nothing more than floating ideas, here are some things that we, here are 10 things that we're thinking about, prioritize them. What do you mm -hmm. think we're working Star Citizen? Just something as simple as that. But I do believe that they need to have greater input to get a sense of the community and it doesn't and, and not in the sense of trying to steer chris's vision but to maybe if nothing else confirm his mm -hmm. his vision right and cig is very quick to talk about how they're when a great idea comes they're open to great ideas so i think that even though we have the areas on the spectrum where you can put in suggestions to the devs i think it would be great if there was just a group that mm -hmm. when something major is coming out we drop it and say what do you guys think of this or dropping it right now or whatever and they get some feedback because uh, i'm sorry there have there have been some full pause some stuff that's mm -hmm. happened that's just like why didn't y'all just ask somebody yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you just all you have to do is just ask somebody? How did y'all miss that? You know that type of stuff to me could be dealt with. You know, oh, like twenty dollars for 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 a digital ticket to watch Citizen Con. Yeah, yeah, just oh, ask yeah. somebody. That was yeah. a bad idea. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember that star stuff. Uh, real quick, I, I just want to say, yeah, Griffin, you and I are having this the, the same thought, but I don't that like Dell in in chat said uh, it, 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 it didn't work out too well for. Them to get to the CSM for 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 even on with CCP CCP is a developer, so I would I would think it had mixed results and I, and yeah. and you know knowing this community, I think it'd be a breeding ground for ill feelings because how do you decide who who gets to be on a council? Yep. So yeah, I I don't I, I don't think that, that that's a win. Or I think that's a lose lose for 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 CIG if they were to implement something like that. That's my that's my opinion. Maybe it'll work out, but I don't think so. C CIG does also have a research department. I know they do. Mm -hmm. I know people who work at that research department, and uh, they're all former former back. Uh, like like I think Wacka is part of that tar department too. Mm -hmm. So Wikipedia. Um, and uh, so like they do they do have internal groups who do this who kind of this with things but like i have never uh, bear is another one i think bear is the head of that department and bear is great bear bear of red was one of those mm -hmm. those those pvpers who could take literally anything and beat you with it 
Like, yeah. like you could take the most meta loadout, he'd beat you in an Aurora. Uh, it was, he was, he was very good at what he did. And, um, he's the, I think, yeah, he's the head of their research. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know how much like money, how much leeway he gets. Cause like one of the things I've, I've noticed is like, I have never, I, I, I intentionally, I'm stupid. You know, those, you know, those like those, those annoying emails you get that say, could you please take some time to take this survey? I am the person who takes those surveys because I know that if I do enough of those surveys, eventually I'll get a survey that says, here's $30, please take the survey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'll take five minutes in, out of my time to be, get, to earn some, some like a, like a gift card to Amazon. Sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, and I also know that if you take those surveys, they listen to you. And if you're looking to kind of make those sort of changes, then that's good. And I have never seen something like that. I've never seen CIG do a public survey or even sending it out for their subscribers or anything like that, which would call, could also go for long ways of just trying to get some ideas of what's going on. So, But we've recently had this, this, uh, this uh, feedback survey, haven't we? Yeah. I, I haven't looked at it myself, but uh, I, I know some. Oh, the Spectrum? Some, um, the one, one on Spectrum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just saw some some content creators um, answering it publicly, right, and then turning it into content. So I, I think I think uh, those are a nice option to 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 get a squeeze squeeze a little bit out of us. And I mean, they could even do, like um, answer the questions, and you get I don't know a golden token for something something that gives you the right to buy something yeah. on the shop or, or a free I, skin or a free, a free t-shirt, a t-shirt and game, a couch, you a couch that doesn't have skulls. <laughs> or, or that's good. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so I, I, I stand, stand corrected. They have been doing surveys. So yeah, do those surveys. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my response. If, if you want to have be yeah. answered, do those surveys. Cause that's I worry uh, personally about the, the amount of uh, trolls to real an to real pe to real answers. They have that, 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 that they, they, filter, they have. Yeah, they can filter. They filter through all that. Yeah, they have algorithms. Yeah. There, there, there mm -hmm. are there is some off the shelf stuff that you can get to buy that'll just filter okay. the noise. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's Bayer who's been doing this for a long time, plus all that team. So they know the difference between this is a good feedback and this is a jackass. So you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um. All right. Well, I think I think it was a good good discussion. Thank you, Major. Thank you, Griffin. Thank you, Fastcar, for coming on and talking with us. If you did enjoy this, hit that follow button here on Twitch. Subscribe on uh, on uh, on YouTube. Uh, hit the like button, and of course, hit the do bell it, icon. Do it now. Uh, and of course, check out Major Star Stuff, aka uh, T Games and st uh, and Star Stuff on uh, something something. Thank you yeah, so much for having Star me. Star Stuff. Uh, and make sure you check out the Soul Citizens, where it's Soul Talk on Thursday. And then yeah. Soul Voices on Saturday, and then Soul Citizen Podcast on Sunday, right? I need to come check out your show. You should go. You, 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 should, you should have and, him on. And Paul, this yeah. is me making a three-fifth joke. So, hey, we, we uh, make the whole <laughs> thing on both. Yes. <laughs> you could have said it was three-fifths of a discount. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, like if you've been watching this, we do this on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Would love to have y'all come and watch us live if you're watching this after the fact. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. And like I always say, hope to see you someday in the black. <laughs>